Ava is a chatty, happy little girl. She just loves being outdoors and she's very family orientated. She just loves being with us. My pregnancy with Eva was unusual from the start because we were in the COVID pandemic. As I came towards the end of my pregnancy, my whole body felt like it was on fire. I was indescribably itchy. It felt like I had mosquito bites all over my whole body. So I ended up going to the hospital and I was diagnosed with a very severe form of a liver problem called obstetric cholestasis. I needed to get Eva out because there was quite a high risk of stillbirth. When Eva was born, the first few days were okay. We were sent from home from hospital as normal. And then the midwife started to get quite concerned about her weight. She was almost skeletal because she just couldn't absorb the nutrients that she needed because her liver wasn't functioning properly. Because she was almost starving, she just didn't sleep. She spent the first three months in and out of hospital trying to work out why she wasn't gaining weight. It got to a point where I was so desperate to find out what was wrong with Eva that I just started doing my own research. It couldn't just be a coincidence that I'd had so many liver problems. And that's when I started to put all the pieces together and realised that actually we had genetic liver problems in the family. In the end, the doctors in Birmingham agreed to do the genetic testing of Eva. We had a phone call from them and they said, yeah, it's confirmed. She's got progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis type 3, which is such a mouthful, we just call it PFIC for short. Progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis type 3, or PFIC3, is an inherited condition, is a severe disorder. It usually is picked up in the first few months of life. It starts with jaundice in uh, infants and babies. It progresses to more severe liver damage that eventually becomes irreversible and leads to liver failure. Without liver transplantations, the majority of these patients would die while they're still children. It's hard to put into words how it makes you feel, especially when you've got a little bundle of a baby who's so precious. Your main aim in life is to look after them and make sure that they're happy and healthy. And to not be able to guarantee her health is really difficult because I just want to be able to look after her and keep her safe. So PFIC3 doesn't really have a cure. It was quite frightening to look online and see the impacts of PFIC. When the liver isn't working properly, it means that you can't absorb vitamins. It isn't just the liver disease, it affects the whole body. At the moment, the only treatment that could take the disease away is essentially to replace the liver with a donor liver. We don't have many options. That's the really hard thing about PFIC. There aren't treatment options available. At the moment, she's on a medication which slows the progression of the disease down but already in her test results, they're seeing that her liver's getting more and more scarred. And then it feels like we've sort of hit the end of the road then. That's it. It's just liver transplant. It's not guaranteed that her body will accept it. Her body could it reject the liver. Very much feels like a, a ticking time bomb. I love you! Childhood should be such a happy time where children are playing and enjoying time with their friends. People try to reassure you, you know, maybe she's just got a cold or maybe she's going to have a growth spurt soon. They don't want to think about the disease progressing. But it is our reality. It is our life. It's always one step behind us. I think it's totally changed our life, having the diagnosis. I think I see Eva in a very different way than our other daughter who's healthy. I see how fragile she is. When she is feeling unwell, it's hard to see that contrast between a normal personality. <laughs> it's difficult to understand when you're four what a liver is, how it functions, why that's affecting the all of your body. Try to stay positive about it and try and think about new treatments coming into the market. That's our sort of shining light that we try and focus on. The problem with rare diseases is that there isn't a great deal of research. It makes it that much harder. Action Medical Research is funding our gene therapy project. When we inject the gene therapy drug, it goes directly into the liver cells. 
I very much hope that the longer term studies will show whether we can not only halt the disease progression, but reverse some of the adverse effects of the disease that would completely transform the management of PFIC3 and other genetic liver disorders. We are desperate because we see that her disease is progressing on her scans. So we really hope that she can get access to gene therapy, which would be a cure for the disease for her. She'd be able to go to school like normal. She'd be able to get an education. She'd be able to have fun with her friends. Action Medical Research is an amazing course supporting so many rare diseases that just aren't getting the support that they need and the support that they deserve. They have a unique role in supporting the research like ours. It can help real patients. For families like ours, it would be life-saving, life-changing. Her whole life depends on it, really.